Now here I have three algebraic fractions. And before I can determine which of these three fractions are improper fractions, I have to look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Now, the degree of the top here, this polynomial, is said to be 2 because it is the highest power of x in this expression that we look for. So we can see it's 2. So it's said to have degree 2. Now in the denominator, this polynomial x squared minus 2, the highest power of x is 2. So it too has degree 2. When I look at this fraction, the polynomial on the top is said to be of degree 3. It's the highest power of x. Whereas when you look underneath here, this has yet to be expanded. So if we were to expand the denominator here, we would get x squared minus 2x plus 3x, so that's plus x, and then 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. So the degree of the denominator, the highest power of x, is 2. And when we come to this last fraction, the degree of the numerator is 1 because the highest power of x is a 1. So that's the degree on the top and the degree in the de bottom, the denominator, is the highest power of x which is 2. Now, what makes an improper fraction then? An improper fraction is defined as where the degree of the numerator, the top of the fraction, is more than or equal to the degree of the bottom of the fraction, the denominator. So, when we look at this first example, we notice that the degrees are exactly the same. So, this is an improper fraction. When I look at my second fraction, I notice the degree of the top, this time, is more than the degree of the bottom. The degree of the numerator greater than the degree of the denominator, so therefore this too is improper. And in the third fraction, you'll notice this time the degree of the numerator, which is 1, is less than the degree of the denominator, which is 2. So this is not an improper fraction. So if I remove this fraction and leave myself with the two improper fractions, we'll work on these two examples. OK, so what have I got to do in order to express these now as mixed fractions? What I'm going to do is turn to a numeric example. OK, let's imagine that we had 16 fifths, 16 divided by 5. We can express this improper fraction as a mixed fraction as three whole ones, that's 15 fifths with one fifth left over. And we'd normally write it as 3 and 1 fifth. Mind you, we could write this as 3 whole ones and 1 fifth. 3 whole ones plus 1 fifth. Now, why have I done this? Well, you'll see why in a moment when I come to work these things out. But Let's just see another way I could set this answer out. 5 into 16. I could do it as a division. 5 into 16. 5 into 16 goes 3 times because 3 fives are 15. And by subtracting 15 from 16, it leaves me with the remainder of 1. OK, so how does this compare to this? Well, hopefully you notice that the 3 is the value that I wrote down here. The remainder, OK, the 1 here, is the value that I wrote there. And the divisor, 5, OK, was the value that I had there. And it's this pattern structure which I want you to learn so that we can use it in examples like this. So let me show you how this works, OK? What I'll do is just draw a line down here, OK? And we'll do some divisions, OK? I've got to divide x squared minus 2 then into this numerator to express this as a mixed fraction, just like I divided 5 into the 16. 
So I have x squared minus 2 then into okay, x squared plus 3x minus the 5. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with algebraic division, but if not, I've done a tutorial on this. Just look under algebraic long division. So on that assumption that you can do this, what do we multiply x squared by? Then to get x squared, it's 1. 1 times each of these two terms here gives x squared minus 2. I'll put the 2 directly under the constant here on the end. And I could fill this place, if you like, with 0x. I don't have to do that, but I uh, just thought it would be easier. Then I subtract to find the remainder, so x squared take away x squared is nothing. 3x take away no x there is just going to be 3x. And minus 5 minus minus 2 is going to be minus 3. So comparing this result now with this result here and how we wrote this in this particular format tells me that I can write this fraction then as the value up here, the quotient as we often call it, that would be 1, plus the remainder, which is the 3x minus 3, that corresponds to that value there, okay, 3x minus 3, over our divisor here, x squared minus 2. Okay, can you see the pattern here? with the pattern that I did across here. Okay, so this is our first fraction then expressed as a mixed fraction. Now I'm going to do this example here. So we've got to divide the top, the numerator, by the denominator. But remember, here I've got to expand this out. Do you remember the denominator came to x squared, then it was minus 2x plus 3x, which was plus x, okay, and then minus 6. And I've got to divide that then into x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So write that there, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. And in the usual way, what do I multiply x squared by to give x cubed? So that's going to be just simply x. So x times each of those three terms gives x cubed plus x squared minus 6x. Subtract to find the remainder. x cubed, take away x cubed, is nothing. Minus 2x squared minus plus x squared is minus 3x squared. And then we have 3x minus minus 6x which is plus 9x. Bring down the minus 1 and then we repeat the process again. What do I need to multiply x squared by to give minus 3x squared? And that's going to be minus 3. So I pop that up there. Minus 3 now times each of the three terms gives minus 3x squared. So pop that underneath there. Minus 3 times the x is minus 3x. And minus 3 times minus 6 is plus 18. Subtract again to find the remainder. Minus 3x squared minus minus 3x squared is 0. Plus 9x minus minus 3x is 12x. And then minus 1 minus plus 18 is minus 19. So this is my remainder now. So according to this division and the pattern that it gives here, my answer will be the quotient x minus 3 plus the remainder which is 12x minus 19, okay, all divided by the divisor. So I could write x squared plus x minus 6 underneath here, but do bear in mind that x squared plus x minus 6 when factorised was this, and it's much better to have the factorised version. So I'm going to write x plus 3 times x minus 2. Okay, so hopefully you can now see how to express a fraction, an improper fraction, as a mixed fraction.